What's up guys, so I'm out here fishing and I have stumbled upon a really intense crappie bite. So I'm propped up against this wall. There's some deep water here next to me. And uh, I just decided to toss a couple of little jigs out here. And I've been getting bit almost every single cast. I've got a chartreuse little tube up here. I've got a little monkey milk two inch grub there. I'm using the seven foot six inch medium um, ACC crappie sticks. Got 10 pound braid to an eight pound monofilament leader. And um, if everything goes according to plan, I should catch one here on this cast. So the reason why I think all these fish are stacked up here is because it's very sunny out and it's warm and this is casting like a shade line and they're just like, right, oh, that was a big one. Oh my God. They're up against this wall getting in the shade. I'm also seeing a bunch of shad flickering around. Dang, that was a really good bite, guys. Oh man. Okay, let's see if we can get one right here. There he is. It's every cast, guys. This is insane. Good ones, too. Good ones. Good ones. Get up here. <laughs> yeah, flip them in the boat. Really solid 11 inch white crappie on the grub. I have like 10 or so already on my string. I'm going to add him on there. We're just going to keep casting, see how many we can get. This is so crazy. I am jacked. Okay, we got that one on there. I might have more than 10. I'll show you guys the stringer here in a minute, but let's focus on catching some of these fish while they're fired up as they could stop biting or I could catch them all. I don't know how many, I don't, I don't know how many are under there, but the water goes pretty far up underneath this wall. And we got this good shape line. It's every cast. That's a smaller one. In the boat. Ooh. He's borderline, but he's going to be a little too small. He's probably like a eight and a half inch, nine inch crappie. He's smoked it though. You there, probably about a nine incher. I think the size limit here is 10 inches. I'm just gonna keep 10 inches just to be safe. But no nice little black crappie, they're mixed. Kitchen white crappie and black crappie under here. So all I'm doing is I'm letting my bait sink all the way down the bottom. And then I'm just very slowly reeling it right back to me. And it's every cast, as you can see, off the bottom. That's another keeper. Another keeper. Get up here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's every freaking cast, guys. It's insane. I have not been on a crappie like this in quite some time and I am loving it. Look at that, nice black crappie, 11 inch fish. Woo. Gotta love that. I really wish I had a bucket so I could just throw them in the bucket. But let me show you guys a stringer, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at all these crappie I've already caught so far. The limit's 30, so there's a good chance that we could get a whole limit of crappie on this stringer before the day is over. I'm honestly surprised I haven't caught two yet. It's gonna happen, I think. There's so many down there, I think. <laughs> unreal. It's unreal. Unreal. Another nice one. He's gonna be borderline. Let's put him on a crappie checker. Let's see how big he is. I think he's he's probably gonna touch right at 10. I'm not letting him go though. Little crappie checker. That is a ten and a half incher. Ten and a half incher, guys. This is like my favorite size crappie to eat. 10 and a half to 12 inches, or 10 to 12 inches, my favorite size crappie to eat. This is just so crazy. And I really love how it's just like right here in front of me. It's just, you know, pitching out 15 feet from the bank, or from my boat. And I'm really just letting the bait just kind of just pendulum back to me. It's not really getting all the way to the bottom sometimes. Just barely creeping it, just twitching it. And it just loads up. <laughs> Come here. I love swinging in the kayak like that. And they are just gobbling it. Look at that. It's choked. It's gone. Down his face. It's gotten to the point now, guys, where I would be surprised if I made a cast and I didn't get a bite. I would start to get nervous. Here we go. Big in. Big in. Big in. Big in. Big in. Get up here. <laughs> Man, they're getting, they're getting to where they're biting it right next to the boat now. And I think they're just kind of just swimming in circles right underneath this little floating thing. Or it's not really a floating thing, it's just a concrete slab structure where the water's able to go up underneath it. Another solid black crappie. He bit the chartreuse jig. I love having a chartreuse and a pearl. I learned just to kind of give them two different looks. They can decide which color they want. 
That's fantastic. Just another nice slab crappie. I'm using relatively light jig heads here. I'm using a 16th ounce on top and I have a 32nd down there on the bottom. Um, I like the jigs to be light. I can reel the bait real slow. You know, this is a small area, so I'm trying to keep my bait in the strike zone as long as possible. And it's just a little bit more natural. If you have a heavy jig head, you have to reel it faster and um, you don't get to soak your bait in that strike zone as long as you would if I had a lighter jig head. Um, I can honestly probably go down to like 230 seconds, um, but the wind's kind of blowing and I kind of lose control of that. So 16th and 32nd is obviously working. <laughs> oh, 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 big one. Is that a crappie? Slab. Freaking slab. Just here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I got lucky that time. Most of the time when you drop your crappie in the kayak, they flop out the side. But that is another nice one. Another nice white crappie. I think we've got evenly mixed fish. I think half the fish on there are white and half the fish on there are black. That is awesome. Look at that. Whew. There we go. There's one. There's one. Come here. Oh yeah, another keeper. <laughs> the bite, I feel like it's starting to die on me. I think that um, there's still some fish there, but I think they might be getting used to my jigs or maybe they're kind of swirled up a little bit further back where they're not on the edge looking out to eat something. But either way, we're gonna keep casting at them and uh, we're gonna see if we can keep catching them. I might change up my plastics, my colors, my little combination of baits here, here in a second. He choked it though. Love that, love that slab white crappie. All right, so I'm gonna try this little bonehead minnow plastic suspended underneath a bobber. Still got my double jig rig handy, but we're just gonna see if we can suspend this guy right next to this edge and if we can get some fish to come out. Just to kind of let me know if there's even any more fish there left. That looks good, looks tantalizing enough to me. I'd eat it. There we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> First cast bobber up to the bobber. I knew it would work. We went about 10 minutes or so without getting a bite on the double jig rig. And all it took was a little bit of enticing, a little bait change. That little bonehead minnow is deadly. You've seen us catch a lot of fish with this thing in the last few months. And that's a good one. That's one of the bigger ones we've caught today. Just insane spot where I'm getting bit. Just letting it sit there. Just letting it just suspend and letting them have an opportunity to come out and eat it. That's awesome. All right, so the wind's really jagging with my boat position. So I'm having to <laughs> reach over and grab a hold of the wall and keep adjusting my kayak. So it's kind of nice that I'm able to, you know, pause my presentation and just let my bait just sit there and suspend. Just trying to work it real slow. Just mainly just let it sit there, let it rock around in the wind and the waves. Just let that bait jiggle. That bait looks really good. It sits horizontal in the water column. Looks just like a little minnow. Just wanting to get eaten by a big old crappie. I, I told y'all, right there's the spot. I don't know what it is about that spot. It's a big one too. The big ones are loving this bait. Oh, that's a slap. What the heck? Whew. Oh, look how big that one is. What a chunk. I told y'all right there. Just let it sit right there. There must be a pile on or something there or a stick, but that is a thick one. Look at that little bonehead minnow in the face. Got him. Got him. Okay, let's see if we can go three for three on these bad boys. There he is. Another one. Another good one. Oh, he might be a little short. We'll see. He's kind of a smaller guy. Oh, another keeper. Ten and a half. Big and big and big old big old slab. Big old slab. Come here. Come to daddy. <laughs> yes. This is definitely a little bit slower paced with uh, bobber and bonehead minnow little combination, but still getting the job done and still doing them dirty. That's another nice one. I gotta count these fish on the stringers. I mean, I've got, I'm getting close to 30. Okay, we're back on the double jig rig program. Let's see if we gave them enough time <laughs> to get fired up about this tactic again. There we go. That feels like a good one. Oh, it is a good one. It's a good one up here. Oh, yes. Yes, we're back on the double jig rig program. But what I did is I put a chartreuse, I got him good, a chartreuse little bonehead minnow on there. That's a stud, what a slab, right there, right under the boat, basically. <laughs> that is so cool. Whew, I love swapping it up on him.
Alright, well I think that I've just about pulled every crappie off of this structure. There could be some pushed way up underneath there, but I'm not able to really reach those guys. I tried skipping my jig up under there, but there's just not enough clearance between the water and the bottom of this structure um, to get it up under there. But nonetheless, we wore the slabs out today. Started off catching them with the double jig rig, then we swapped to a bobber, then back to the double jig rig, and uh, we just caught them until they wouldn't bite anymore. But uh, I've got a stringer loaded up with crappie. I think I counted 25 on there, might be 24, somewhere in the 24 or 25 range. But they are just looking good. Let me pull a string up so you guys remember what I'm talking about. This thing looks crazy. Ready? Oh, gotta get prepared for this. Brace myself. Here we go. Woo. Look at all those slabs. Woo. And all of these fish are anywhere between 10 and a half. And I think my biggest one was 13 inches. I got all black crappie, white crappie. And I even got this guy here. A little black striped, black nose crappie. Really cool fish. And oh, I gotta put these down. They're so heavy. Oh. And it was just so much fun catching these guys. I hated that they quit biting, but I'm not gonna complain. I think I've probably caught 35 or 40 all together. Um, but the majority of the fish I caught were keepers, which is awesome. A lot of times when I go fishing and get on a school of fish, I'm usually, you know, weeding through 10 or 15, you know, non-keepers to get a keeper. So definitely impressed with the quality of fish today. And uh, since there's not anywhere else that I'm really wanting to try and I feel like I've done enough damage for the day, I think I'm just gonna load these guys up and get out of here. So hope you guys enjoyed watching that little smash fest, but the video is not done because we are gonna take these guys home. We're gonna clean them. And of course, the best part about a day of crappie fishing is eating them at the end of the day. So we'll catch you guys back at the house. Well, there she is. There is a fresh fish taco. Y'all just saw us whip up. We've got our crappie fillets. We've got avocado, we got tomato, cilantro, and we got some green sauce. Just a mm. simple, quick and dirty recipe for a delicious, quick bite to eat for lunch. Let's give it a little taste test, see how it is. Hopefully I'll probably make a mess. Here we go. Mm. Delicious? Mm-hmm. Very delicious. I'm glad that the taco didn't like just disintegrate right here all over the floor. <laughs> we came in here, it's better lighting in here and I was really worried about it. I have no plate underneath me, I'm going rogue. Here, give it, give it a little taste. Mm. What you think about it? Delicious? So good. Mm. If you're not eating fish tacos in 2021, I definitely recommend you add it to your <laughs> cooking arsenal. It's just a great way just to get away from frying all your fish or grilling all your fish or baking it. Just so you can have different types of fish dishes throughout the week if you get a big mess of fish. Like I did today, it was yeah. crazy. Caught a bunch of crappie by that wall. It was completely unexpected. <laughs> um, I fished all around that area for like two hours before I got on that spot and didn't catch anything. So to say I was pleasantly surprised would be an understatement whenever I started catching those fish and they were all good ones. And uh, hopefully we can catch some more as spring starts to show itself here in Central Arkansas. But guys, that's gonna be it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, do us a huge favor, hit the like button for us and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future fishing adventures. We're calling Jay and we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye guys.